Uh, my name is Johan Fischer. I'm the ND engineer for Nordic Semiconductor and uh, USB uh, support maintainer for the fire project. Um, yeah, so the title is a bit uh, weird, maybe because I'm maintainer, so I'm not sure I can provide you a perspective from the application or from the users, but uh, I know some pitfalls and uh, I try to look for the some questions in the Discord or internal uh, channels and yeah, what the user have uh, for difficulties to configure to get some parts working, so I will try to, yeah, to provide some guidelines about yeah, what is what? We updated documentation recently, so it's. Um, I think it's a bit better, but there are still some gaps, and I also used preparation for this talk to, yeah, for, to improve documentation. But I'm still working in it, so let's uh, start. So I will uh, just um, show how to enable USB support, how can I configure USB support in Zephyr, and then I will go over the supported classes in the tree and points on. Yeah, how to configure or where are some pitfalls and so on. And yeah, that, let's start. So, so how to enable USB device support in Zephyr. So the first thing you need is to, uh, from your board perspective, to or from board device tree is to provide uh, a Zephyr UBC zero uh, node label. Yeah. That uh, is um, not label used internally by the stack to identify a controller. So what one is this? in that case, it is USB C for Nordic semiconductor, but it differs from the board to board. Yeah. Uh, and um, for the current use, we have maybe you know we have two device stacks now in 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 the Zephyr, the current one and the new experimental one. For this example is for the current one and um, most are configured in using carbon fee options. Yeah. So you have so to enable device stack and then uh, set a vendor ID and collector ID uh, values and also uh, device, uh, the strings configuration is uh, done using uh, configs and it's, yeah, it speaks the yeah, you can change it at the runtime. time. Also the configuration of self power or maximum power is for the specific configuration. But only one configuration is supported for the current stack is also Right, using uh, can configure options, so you can change it at the runtime. Actually, and that's uh, one of the issues. But uh, yeah, and uh, you need a small code to that. Actually, depends on the classes you use or so, uh, your application. But you need to provide some minimal code to enable USB. And one thing not everyone know there is uh, you can pass a status callback to USB enable. Uh, function and uh, it will be called every time there is a new event on, on the low level. Yeah, it's actually as it is uh, defines uh, from the driver level, not from the stack. And that can be used like to let the conf to application know if the device, if the if if the host selected uh, a configuration, so you can you can prepare your application that the next time the host will start communication. Yeah, it doesn't. Needs to be the case, case yeah, yeah, but it's but like, like the first step, step yeah, I know something is happening, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, you can also can check for the resets, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So, so, so there, there are a few, few other kind of options. options, they are yeah. maybe weird, weird or, or, yeah, yeah it's, it's, the, the reason, reason is that's how the current stack was developed over the years, yeah. And uh, function are added or simplified. And there's a weird uh, config options, uh, uh, config USB composite device. So in, in the current uh, state of in the tree, yeah, this function just changes the um, code triple yeah, for device class, device subclass, and device protocol. So if it's, this option is, option is not set, so in device descriptor, the code triple is set to zero which means that the host has to look at the interface descriptor of each function and uh, look for the, for, for the specific function flag. If there is, yet, if there is a mass storage class enabled, the host will look at the interface descriptor of the 
uh, of that specific interface descriptor and identify the function behind it. Here in the example, it's a mass storage class. And uh, so you as application or as user doesn't have to enable this function. Uh, if you use, for example, even if you use multiple instances of, let's, in the new stack, it's possible for, for mass storage class, yeah? Or the, the reason, as the, the only reason to enable it is if you class is, uh, has multiple interfaces. Like, for example, CDC SM. CDC SM actually selects this option, but uh, like, for example, CDC ECM. If you use CDC SM, you have to enable this option. For the, re the reason is that <coughs> this option changes uh, the code triple in the device descriptor to this specific value, and uh, that advises the host to use interface association descriptor code triple to identify what interfaces belong to a function. So the host. Like for the CSM, there are two interfaces, and the host needs to identify what interfaces belong to a function. So if you use CDC, ECM, ECM class, please enable this uh, option so that the host, Windows host or Linux host, doesn't matter, can identify uh, the interfaces belong to a specific function. And also we have. Uh, USB device in slice at port at boot. So that is specific for the web boards like uh, USB dongles in a 50 to 840 dongle or similar devices. And um, the users uh, would like to to have a kind of run, run, to run the USB uh, support at boot to use CDCSM for logging. That's the only uh, reason for this option. And um, you can also use it with the snippet, with CDCSM snippet, to enable logging just at the runtime from the beginning. You don't have to uh, call USB enable from your application in that case, but if that application uses some USB classes, you have a conflict, yeah. Um, there's also support for uh, binary object storage uh, descriptors which is enabled by the Kaconfig USB device bus uh, uh, option. And it actually, it enables, uh, what, what it does, it enables uh, BS handling by the stack and allows the user to register, uh, uh, for example, a compliance, uh, a compatibility uh, BS descriptor to a root bus descriptor. Uh, but the thing is that this option changes BCD USB value creator uh, to uh, to ten. Yeah, like it's not to signalize the host. Please look for the uh, BOS descriptor, for example, for LPM. Yeah. If you controller supports LPM, you can use BOS to uh, to um, to provide the host information. Yeah, and there's also a config USB device. OS descriptor support, uh, or the option to enable that, it's mainly used, uh, or actually in the tree used only by RNDs uh, class, and uh, that is to provide Windows OS descriptors for the host. Yeah. Um, in the, that should be actually covered now in the current documentation for USB device support. So. Uh, and uh, now we have a new device support in the tree for alpha editing, and uh, there are a few differences. That is still experimental, but you you can use it for for few user cases. But it's yeah. Uh, so difference is that we don't have that many uh, car config options now. So it's just one enable device stack uh, next. Yeah. And everything uh, to configure, like PID and vendor ID, uh, it needs to be done by the application. Yeah, that's the difference. So, and uh, the reason for that is that you can disable your uh, USB device and reconfigure vendor ID or the product ID and uh, restart it. Yeah, also change other properties from USB device descriptor and also class registration. You can remove. Uh, for example, if you have CDC SM instance, you can remove, shut down, remove uh, CDC SM, 
uh, uh, register another class and power up again to the USB device. Uh, that's more flexible uh, if you compare that with uh, the current stack. I will uh, explain what classes are supported or not with, for the new experimental device stack. So let's start with CDCSM. That's one uh, uh, maybe uh, many people complain if they start working with Sapphire how to use CDCSM for for logging or for shell or for uh, application specific stuff. So, the thing is that you had uh, for so our UART driver API in Zephyr cell is used by various subsystems for communication. That's like for Bluetooth, uh, you can attach a uh, HCI uh, transport layer through the UART interface. Um, there's a thread, has the name APC or NPC support uh, that also uses API. And um, API itself, there's uh, another thing that's uh, also con maybe confusing yeah, for, for new people that. Uh, we have three types of UART API. Yeah, it's a simple one, it's polling, then interrupt driven and async. And not uh, every driver support async, for example, but we have subsystem that uses async for default, but fall back for polling, for example. Yeah. So it's, uh, and it's not actually not a driver property or, yeah, uh, it's just uh, implementation API. Yeah. Um, so CDCSM implementation provides a virtual UART interface. It doesn't use a real hardware. It's an uh, uh, emulated uh, interface. And it's desirable for emulation to behave like a real interface. Yeah, but it's not always, yeah, it's not always possible. Yeah. Well, people have different expectations. Yeah. And CDCSM implementation supports uh, polycant interrupt driven APIs only, not the async. Yeah. Uh, and there's actually no easy way to, no, there is, but you, if you start a, a development application, you don't know what API, what your driver supports, what API, and you have to look at the code or um, try it out. And, uh, so, and how it looks, yeah, it's uh, the same picture I had uh, yesterday, but uh, we have, uh, on the bottom there's a USB connection between the controllers, yeah. Uh, that it's actual connection and on the top is serial connection. Yeah, so your application on the both side, on the on the on the remote, on on the CIFA application, the interface is your API. Yeah, that we have on there on logical level, level there's only serial connection. You can use only that, but this your API provides on the CIFA side. So, yeah, the compatibility for the for the CSM is CIFA. CDCM, ACM, UART, it will stay also in, in, it will not change in the new uh, device stack, yeah? So you, if you switch to uh, to new device stack as default, this class will not break that much, yeah? It will just stay the same interface, yeah? Because it's the common one from the UART, yeah? And, yeah, and uh, to instead it, uh, uh, UART, uh, virtual UART uh, for your application, you just need to provide uh, a node and compatibility. Yeah? And you can have approximately three uh, virtual devices on your board. Yeah, so if, yeah, but it depends. For example, if your controller supports uh, six uh, in endpoints, yeah, you can have three virtual devices because you need for each device, you need two in, uh, in endpoints, one bulk, one interrupt, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and the, finally you have to enable uh, serial support in the car config option. So uh, if if your application for some level, if you don't need logging anymore in production, yeah, you can just disable CRL and it's for like for, for, for real driver, there is no difference. It's the same uh, installation level. Um, yeah, same car config option to enable or disable. It's from configuration point of view, it's like uh, real UART uh, controller. And uh, the one thing there is an application you have or I can do is to uh, if before after you enable USB or before you start start using uh, uh, UART uh, this virtual UART controller, you can wait for a DTL uh, ready signal. 
Yeah, that's the only way to uh, determine if an application on the host side uh, start communication. Yeah, or open the port or the interface. There is no other ways. Yeah, there maybe you can if what the, for example Linux was though it changed about it. We could we could have Tesa yeah, like hacked interface to detect that, but I, I, I certainly don't like it, and we will work another. Um, interface on notification system to signal that. But uh, our UART API doesn't provide a way to order that polling, yeah? What you can do is just to poll for this uh, data ready signal and nothing else. The thing is you can even use a, uh, a callback that device is configured because that means that host recognize your device and select it to configuration, but it doesn't mean there is an application that actively use the, uh, the interface, yeah? So then for you, if you write a custom application specific to a CDC ACM uh, UART, yeah, the only way to uh, to know if there is some application using it or not is to wait for the signal and for the application to use the signal on the host. Actually, yeah, what I said it's on. The thing is that as a communication for the CDC ACM UART is completely as every USB communication is determined by the host. Yeah, if there is no application on the host side, there will be no in-out token. It's, uh, and uh, for example, if your application uh, actively writes to UART, yeah, start to write, you you, you will st in data lose the data, like on real UART, yeah, on it will just block on the moment, not block, but not write IQs anymore on, on virtual UART. Yeah. So that's the thing, and if uh, there's a behavior like that, if the data passed uh, to UART, and uh, UART uh, will fulfill, and device is not configured, it will be discarded. Yeah, it's this just not to not to slow down application at the startup. Yeah, but the difference is in configured state. If you for you at pull in, is that it discards uh, the character from the tail, so it just uh, like overflow and drop the the uh, the first one. Yeah. Uh, the difference to EQ does that you will not have EQ to X. Yeah? It's actually, the thing is if you design the application for the UART API, but not specific for the CDC and UART, that should just work. Yeah? <laughs> but, so if you start some appli custom application, don't try to think like of CDC SM specific, yeah? Write it like for the UART, yeah? for this real driver. Yeah? And, that should work. I hope so. If not, blame me. Uh, yeah. So mass storage class. Um, it's another one that it's uh, some kind of uh, difficult to understand on the, how to configure it. Um, yeah. But we have implementation for the current and new USB device support in the tree. And there are two car config options to enable this support. Uh, it's only car config option is used. So it's for the for mass storage class support setup, no device tree is needed because it's just a thin layer in the USB. Yeah, there's yeah, like a USB code, SCSI code, and finally the backend that is used as for block devices. Yeah, and so the new implementation allows you to have multiple LANs instances. Yeah, if you have two SD cards or two flash disks or whatever. Yeah. Um, and but both implementations use a disk access subsystem as backend, yeah, for the block uh, as block devices. Yeah. So that is the overview of this. Yeah, on the top is mass storage class, and it uses disk access API. And each uh, driver in the API, if this is enabled, yeah, it's a, a node in the double linked list. Yeah, so it's always yeah. Um, is, you can pass the argument so internally, yeah, you pass the argument to this access API with the name of a disk, and it will go to the double linked list and select the one and use it for write, read, or whatever access. Yeah. And yeah, the only car config option you have to use to, uh, to select what of this disk or drivers should be used in, for the current uh, USB stack is car config mass storage disk name. Uh, in new implementation, it's a bit, a bit different as an instantiation macro for the logical units, and then you can pass disk name. So the thing is that 
Current configuration supports only one disk. You can have only one disk exposed to the host, RAM disk, flash, or SD, MMC. New implementation allows you to expose multiple disks, but there are limitations on the backends. The thing is that RAM disk is, can be configured, is configured using car config, so you can have only one instance of the RAM disk. You can switch to, uh, to use uh, device stream for the configuration, but it's a bit uh, tricky, so I, that needs more discussion. But that would, for testing, it's very nice. If you have trouble with mass storage class support, use RAM disk as backend. It should always work, yeah, because just use something in the, some area is in the memory. It's actually defined in the disk code itself, yeah, and it's like always works, yeah. That you, if that doesn't work, open a back report for USB. <laughs> and then uh, we have uh, flash disk support. So this one supports multiple instances and can be configured using device tree. Uh, uh, you have just to provide a flash disk and uh, disk name property, and you have multiple instances of flash disk. And uh, by flash, I mean uh, raw, nor flash, yeah, like on the SOC or on external flash. Uh, and uh, finally, is the MMC. You can use it. We are with a spy driver or yeah, some specific controller, but the uh, issue here with STMMC, you can even with new support, you can you can't use multiple instances because there is one option uh, in Kconfig, uh, and uh, that is the name volume name, yeah, and because the master class or disk access uses names to identify the disk, yeah, you can have more than one, yeah. It, <laughs> so it's uh, one of the issues. So we have to fix this part and probably discuss how to handle the RAM disk and so on. And, uh, and a few examples, yeah. That is the, for the uh, block device on a flash partition, yeah. You have actually to describe your partition self. Or if you have already defined one on the board tree, you can, you should delete it. But uh, be careful, yeah. If you enable this portion here, to be exposed to the host, make sure that it's not used by other subsystem like uh, this non. I I don't remember the name for the setting subsystem, whatever. Yeah, there's a one of things in conflicts that people do. Uh, uh, example configure some example configuration combined with another one and then doesn't work and uh, it crashed on the boot because this partition is used by some other subsystem and you you have to delete it before you instate it knowing here. And um, yeah, it's for newcomer, it's uh, actually a mess to get, uh, to identify why it, why it doesn't work, yeah, why my, my uh, firmware crashes, yeah, because someone tried to access the same partition and uh, mem fault or something else. And finally here you can describe uh, the disk, the flash disk selves, and the weird, more, most weird thing here also NAND, you have to name it NAND, but it's not NAND, it is NOR, still NOR on draw flash, but uh, the NAND is used, or you can have to use NAND if you uh, want to allow uh, your firmware access uh, this partition uh, through the FAT file system, because FAT file system uses NAND to identify this <laughs> flash disk. <laughs> so it's, not be not confused, yeah. It's it's not converted to NAND, yeah. It's still the same uh, NOR flash, but that is how it is in the tree. It's not uh, only in USB. That's also in other areas uh, for the file system and so on. And you have to provide the same name here. Uh, yeah, not here. That's wrong here. Just ignore. It. You don't have to. That's using device tree for the flash. That's uh, a typo. So, and uh, another example is using SDMMC. That is very magic, yeah, because you don't, here on the car config side, you just uh, configures to USB on the enables mass storage class, but you don't have to, in the current state of three, you don't need to enable anything in car config. So this drive is magically enabled just by compatibilities here. So that's a kind of issue we had. Maybe we have to fix that somehow, but uh, yeah, the thing is like, if you look what can car config option I have to enable and enables that because it's it's there, yeah, but it's enabled if that's fine this compatibility. But they 
for the user it's weird because they see the car configuration everything nothing happens because it's yeah the node is not still not there yeah or it's they cannot enable that somehow in in the cooking config file and so on so the thing is that everything happens here they have to describe you uh you controller and then uh this like mmc and here not inside the controller to enable two drivers yeah and that's uh i think that it's a uh, for the user at least we had that last time this issue on the github but that just was kind of yeah problematic to explain why it's that so then um bluetooth host controller interface that uh, works actually very nice with Zephyr. we have uh, support for bluetooth low energy controller uh um, and uh, but there is no support for uh the classic idea seo channels yeah we don't support that and uh, but uh, this transport it does it uh, uses uh, host control interface raw api to expose host control interface to remote yeah to for example to linux host or i don't know what else works with that one but yeah. um yeah and we have two implementations for the current and new usb device support and uh this for the current implementation there's a limitation or as an issue that it's kind of combined with other classes so you you device uh if, if you use that with the current stack your device has to support only one function yeah and only the uh, host control and the phase transport layer do not combine it with cdc sm or the, with the view it it will not work yeah because uh, because of how it was designed yeah we don't support this type of transfer yeah we support low energy link layer only so this part in the driver or, or the, in the class implementation was just skipped yeah it's not there and what happens if the if you plug it in with multiple interfaces yeah in the to the for example to the linux host it tries to claim this interface too yeah and if that is cdc asm you can't access that anymore yeah that's the issue yeah so you have for the with the current stack you have provide um just single function device not uh, combine it with cdc asm or dfu whatever yeah it will not work even with uh, <laughs> thomas fixed uh, provider fixed to the bt usb driver but that was about interface number if i remember correctly so it's this the, this issue is still there but that that is fixed in the in the new implementation Union implementation you can combine it with cdc sm or other classes but there's still no functionality it just consumes resources on the controller side because we we don't in bluetooth we don't have this type of synchronous data data support yeah it's not it's not there so if even if in, with new stack if you combine it it just wastes some it would uh, waste isochronous endpoint resources yeah but that is yeah we have to deal with that somehow so we have networking support by uh, provided by cdc ECM, em and nd support that works mostly uh, the same yeah it uh, provides a virtual ethernet connection between remote and the zephyr network support so it doesn't expose you uh you ethernet controller to the host yeah it creates actually a virtual ethernet connection between uh, between the interface on, on the firmware on on the uh, on the host yeah and that's the reason we have to provide two make addresses yeah for this uh, implementation the one is for example like ECM is i make address that uh, will be used by the host yeah on the host side uh the interface controller will have this IMAC address but because there is a kind of provided it and virtual ethernet connection we also have a uh, local mac address yeah. it's the same for all three implementations yeah but the way how to uh, provide this information to the host is a bit different yeah we have uh, a new implementation on ecm support uh it's improved uh, a bit uh, but uh, maybe we can also work on the some solution to export real ethernet controller 
yeah, to the host for for whatever reason, yeah. But we, you, people are creative; they will find some use case, yeah, finally, for testing as well. So, and the configuration for CDCCM is for the for the current implementation is that uh, these MAC addresses are hard coded, and you cannot have multiple instances of the cluster; it's just always on. There's a hard remote address is hard coded. A remote address can be set using a car config option, but a local address is hard coded, and there is no implementation to use uh, API from network management to change this MAC address. Yeah, that's a mess. Yeah, it's an issue. But uh, I, I didn't hear people complain about that. But I look at that for the documentation and for the and then found out that that's a bit uh, yeah, it's not nice. The same for CDC, that is a typo. And the new ACM supports, uh, you can set the MAC addresses using uh, device tree, both uh, remote and the local one. If you do not provide local MAC address, it will be a, a random one. But there is also the API implemented to set it from, like from the shell, yeah, you can change the MAC address, local MAC address from the shell. Yeah. And finally, CDC, EM, and end is, for the current implementation, it's the same issues, but there's even even the local Mac is hard coded, yeah. And if you use NDs, please enable car config device OS descriptor. Yeah, I will. It's uh, uh, otherwise uh, uh, Windows host will not uh, recognize the device or not uh, not the proper driver. Yeah. Um, yeah. HID. Uh, yeah. Another thing what we have. Um, we have implementation for as a new test only one yeah in the tree I'm currently working on new one uh, and um, HID supports multiple instances yeah. but it abuses a uh, device driver model yeah. uh, so there's no HID device API as such yeah there's no there's no device config or device data provided internally. So it just uses this uh, device model API to, to get uh, the instance, yeah? nothing more. And um, instantiation itself is, is provided using listify macro and uh, car config option device count. Yeah, there's a car config template. And if you select uh, two HID devices, listify macro will create two instances yeah, internally. And in your application, um, ah, there we explain. So, and um, in your application, you can get it based on the uh, HID prefix content uh, number postfix. Yeah. So for HID, each instance uh, required a HID report descriptor. That's on the right. So, <laughs> so. That looks the same. You could use the same descriptor for Bluetooth HID. Yeah, it's uh, the, in API is split it into parts. Whereas for HID, we have two headers. One is a common one that you can also use uh, for Bluetooth HID, and uh, API part for device uh, support. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, in the simplest case, you just have to provide a one callback. There's an interface to the register, yeah, and you just need to provide a, a interrupt in because yeah, interrupt in endpoint is required for HID. Yeah, we have to provide just the one for the to get it working. Yeah, in simplest possible way, just a single callback that just write the endpoint and increments uh, here in the report. The report here is just. Uh, Two octets. That's ID and some counting number. Yeah. And yeah, that's a very small example for the application. Yeah. And here you have to use status callback. And if the device is configured, if you get the event, you can just ping the callback one time. Yeah, to get the communication started. And yeah, it will. Uh, the host will obtained reports based on the descriptor settings, yeah. There's a default uh, descriptor settings uh, by the car config options and in documentation, we'll not get in details here. But the thing is that now you, here in, it is in the device and application, you have to use device kit binding, but it's problematic anyway. <laughs> uh, and I, I know people would like to remove that. And uh, the thing is that you, 
what is confusing is that you have to register a device. Yeah, you have a you get a device, but then you have to register a device. But it's not device; it's just a, a interface. Yeah, provided by uh, heat ops. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's used by the core. So it's a bit uh, confusing. And uh, there was a pull request to move to move to device tree to instead of using device tree, but it's problematic as well because the resources here are, yeah, it's on the controller side, yeah, like endpoints, but we are on the, on the opposite side on the user part. So. And uh, one of the issues is that with current implementation that uh, are the car config options applies to all instances. Yeah, if you change the polling interval, it applies to all instances. Yeah, that's a big issue. If you, or if you enable output, uh, out interrupt endpoint, it applies to all instances. Yeah, so it's a mess. But as long as you, for example, if you implement two keyboards, it works fine, or the keyboard mouse and so on. Yeah, that should work. Uh, audio class, I will skip that. Uh, the view, yeah, as well. So, questions? <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be working. Uh, two quick questions, one comment. Yeah. Um, I see the move of configuration settings towards the application side yep. in the new version. Um, is there a way for the application side to inquire or handle situation when the number of endpoints provided by a device is exceeded or it's not no. available? So how? And the question would be application handles this exception condition when the number you of will get, get is error on initialization. But that happens at runtime. Yeah. So when you design the software for a particular um, yep. a purpose and you don't necessarily target single device, how do you handle the least common denominator or handle errors or design the application to run the, without it? There is no easy way then to use to, to get information about your controller, how many endpoints it supports, and to know how we sure we can improve implementation uh, class documentation sector to document how many endpoints it uh, require. Yeah. But um, the thing is if you design a specific application, yeah, you you have to know your controller on to what it supports and then in, Select you configuration. Just that it feeds the purpose of an operating system of abstracting hardware resources that you want to not be specifically tied to one particular hardware. But I understand your point. Thank you. The, yeah, the thing is, in the tree, we have uh, various of boards. And like example, if you look alone at STM, how many uh, controller different configuration on controller side, yeah, and it's all it's it's the issue, yeah, that it sometimes it doesn't work if people select, I don't know, three. Uh, CDC SAM instances, yeah, on, on HID, it, no, it, it, you have just four interrupt endpoints, for example, or in, in, uh, in endpoints, two of them bulk, two interrupts, and you're out of the resources. That's, yeah, but uh, you will, in the new support, it's there will be detailed error message that's just con configure, apply this configuration, but it's on runtime, yeah. Got you it. can, because we, there was a, um, People wanted to have that this functionality, yeah, just to to do uh, maybe crazy things, but just reconfigure your behavior of your USB device at runtime, yeah, just change configuration to a new one. It's also for us, it's very good for testing, yeah. We have shell support; we can change device configuration at runtime and restart it, yeah. It's CDCM, you restart it as ECM and so on. In the same spirit, how about setting up the interrupt priority when? when working with a specific, uh, or configuring a specific USB controller. I don't get it, sorry. As part of the configuration of a specific USB controller to work as a device, would you not be able to configure the inter priority of the USB IP for it to be? Yeah, but that's what we, there is a different setting for the driver and for the subsystem. So the driver is, so you're setting the application still doesn't have control over the ability to, over the specific IRQ priority? No. It's the, it's the car config uh, option. And actually, it should be device tree property. 
Yeah, it's device three. And it can't be written on device in the device three. Oh, I got the message. Thank you. No comment. It's okay. just that the, the we can discuss on the floor. No, <laughs> understand. Just the, the use of new may be confusing in in some amount of time. So if you if you use a V2, it would be more clear. Thanks. Okay. Carlos, come on. Okay. All right. Just one question for us, Jeff. You can. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no time. No time. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.